I'm here in La Harve, France at this 3D printed building by Seabay. And incredibly, there's not a single crack on it that I've been able to see. Today, we're going to take a tour through the inside with Seabay CEO, Barry Hendrick, who you'll recognize from our previous podcast episode. Welcome, I'm Barry Hendrick, CEO of Seabay Construction. And at this moment, we're in France at the building we've printed in October. Uh, it's being finished and I'm going to show you around to get with Jerry Pross. These walls are being printed with based on a four layer system, which means the first two layers they're having a structural function. The other two layers, the one is the aesthetical and then the other one is for placing insulation inside. So here the, that wall is being built up like this. Here actually these are two walls. Uh, so they wanted to build print a wall in it, in it um, as uh, that it will be shown. Um, it's pure aesthetical. Here, this is the wall which has got a structural function as well as the insulation being placed. Um, what should have been done is actually that the window would be placed where you see the insulation. Um, you can see it from here. Um, during printing, uh, the operators they place the PS foam so there is no cold bridge. In the detailing during design and engineering, they thought of uh, putting the windows over there so that it would overlapping. Uh, what they do now in uh, in practice, they're going to place a metal plate in front of it, which you can see also there at that, at that window. The lintel, the structural principle, is indeed, like I mentioned, uh, the first two layers. Um, uh, are, they have got uh, the, the, the tr structural function. Within every wall there is like a column with reinforcement. Uh, in that regard you don't need to apply new regulations because having an RC frame, a column with uh, reinforcement in it, um, it's already standardized, uh, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel. You've got the lintel, so uh, there is poured in concrete in here with reinforcement. Uh, during printing, scaffolding is being placed so that uh, within one go, this wall together with here the frame is being printed in what like maybe one or two hours. How long um, did it take to print the whole building? It took like one week. That was including all the events. Uh, you can imagine printing buildings is quite new, so it's it, it's a spectacle. Uh, so in this case, week. Uh, they also invited a lot of students, the local government, etc., uh, that uh, watched during printing. So instead of being able to do your work commonly, um, you need to take that into account so that eventually you know, you're printing while there are visitors, while there is a camera crew, etc. One week um, and then it's up to the contractor to finish up the building, almost done and for them it's also something new. So they, uh, before they're going to do something, it takes a lot of time to see what, what actually they got, how the printing stuff looks like and then figuring it out what would be the best way to place the windows, the electricity, etc. Other companies are focusing on this printing one long wall. What we've learned within the Dubai project back in 2016 when we were engineering it, as a result of temperature differences over day and night as well as winter summer, and we've done those analyses um, with a structural engineering company. Um, and they concluded if you have one big wall uh, as a result of those expanding and shrinkage uh, as a result of temperature differences, it will crack. Um, uh, it's like f having fatigue in, in, in the material. As a result, we said, okay, you must print wall elements of around two, three, four meters and then having those joints and they are actually um, uh, with expansion uh, foam, um, they can move um, and then as a result you don't have any cracks. That's one, and the other one is um, and what is very important uh, with our concrete, it's really fast setting. So uh, normally then um, uh, the concrete will expand and, and shrink when it is getting hard within the first hours. Um, if you cure it properly, so you have seen it also in other movies of us, um, one of the operators is spraying water on it, um, then actually it uh, doesn't uh, expand and shrink that much and it doesn't crack. The shape of most of the walls, they're all double curved on the outside. It's a round building, uh, but not only round, it's also like having this uh, parabolic shape. Um, then, uh, and the inside, uh, they're all also curved in one way. It's sort of a four layer system and it would be possible to make it a three layer system, which means uh, reducing the amount of material uh, by 25%, uh, as well as printing speed, of course. Uh, but in respect of having it safely being done, um, we have to choose for that four-layer system.
Uh, of course, in your printing, um, uh, since we have a really fast setting concrete, uh, you've also seen that I think with printing um, uh, at SIBA, if we are low in, in the water, then it could be uh, that there is eventually one layer uh, a bit watery. Um, so it's not all the same consistency um, that's possible within the system. In the end, printing is still uh, a people's job. Um, uh, we value the people need to be trained, um, and based on that, they gain experience. If they've uh, purchased a printer, then we train them for like five to ten days hands-on training uh, like you followed it also last week um, and still uh, you need to have a good feeling um, and you've seen for example the start of that match you did it was like just one bucket startup material if you compare that with other um, uh, people it can take maybe two or three buckets uh, that experience is relevant in order to have a smooth print uh, or eventually having uh, one layer a bit watery-ish but for the result for the quality actually it's not an issue it's more having it something aesthetical i think based on building such a building you've directly learned a lot of things that you can optimize um, like i mentioned instead of having a four layer system uh, delete one layer um, still um, and you've got the same quality you can have um, uh, the structural principle as well as the insulation in it um, only you, you minimize uh, the amount of material needed as a result thereof you're of course reducing the cost as well as reducing printing time um, but within such a project um, and what we're focusing on of course is building faster and cheaper but uh, also uh, we work with companies that uh, it's about having a, an, an, a a flagship building or and then the cost is not the most important it should be nice it should be um, aesthetical uh, under nice architecture being built and this is such a project uh, so in the end it was not that the building should be faster and cheaper compared with other ones. In this case, the client want to have their first experience with printing. And this was a nice, safe um, uh, opportunity project um, in which they could um, uh, go through such a process of design and engineering and eventually building by means of, of printing. Normally what we do is during design and engineering, the last stage is making the print protocol, which means within every wall element there is a booklet um, and indicated uh, for the team or also by the team what they're going to place so the amount of anchors in every wall in the last layer because we've got the dilatation there are anchors um, uh, uh, holding the, the, the structural part and the last the outer side wall together um, and we calculate how many anchors would be needed um, and where and how they need to be placed um, same things we do with for example the scaffolding of where we here have a window as well as um, uh, where you want to have uh, the wall sockets or the buttons etc um, so uh, uh, and operator they've got that um, uh, book uh, for every wall element knowing i need this amount of material printing takes this time we need to place a printer here surveyor made the dots on the ground so that they know for this print the printer lag should be there and that you're printing uh, either um, uh, the, the scaffolding or the ps elements are being placed during printing by the operator uh, so that afterwards you only have to remove that uh, and that you don't need to drill anymore um, or indeed um, uh, if you don't know where to have the wall sockets later on you can still drill it and place the, the, the pipings. I believe these are like 11 wall elements so um, based on being printed out of um, 11 different positions and that's why it's relevant our printer at the setup time you drive to the right location you lower the legs, you level it, and then actually um, it's possible to directly start printing. The most important thing, the mixed pump system always had to be on the same, pl uh, same place. So that is a thing that we didn't move around. So then actually you can, within just a couple of minutes after print, move the printer to a next location with two people. Um, then one guy is like curing the wall. Uh, the other guy operator is placing the printer to the next position, measuring in. Um, there are like two dots on the ground, um, and measuring in the model, uh, do a dry test, uh, make sure that there is no collision or whatever, uh, that it is safe. And then actually you're ready to print your second wall. Um, printing it which takes like one or two hours so it means by the end uh, in one day um, it will be possible to print two three walls uh, which means 11 walls uh, it's like four or five days done in this 
project it's around two pallets of material which is around uh, 2.4 ton per wall element these are like 12 um, uh, wall elements most of the piping's electricity they're coming out of the ground which means um, the, the ground floor is just a concrete slab which is being poured in with reinforcement what we did and there's also in other projects like the Vergadefabriek or the Dubai project uh, or the project in Saudi Arabia uh, all the piping is already being placed um, in the floor and then they come out and you're printing around them and same goes for the toilet as well for the water etc I'm actually like how uh, it feels inside the building outside it is like in around 20 25 degrees but still here inside it's pretty cool which means the insulation is pretty good and I think that's important eventually having a house or a building in which people uh, feel that's comfortable to be in um, we just went out of the hotel the hotel room was already like fucking warm um, so I'm pretty, pretty uh, positive about the insulation value. In the Netherlands, what we need uh, the um, R value of, uh, of at least 6.5. Um, also, uh, since the buildings we design over there, uh, they need to comply with, uh, they call it bang, almost energy neutral. Um, and then you need a high insulation value. In the Netherlands, it's standardized. I believe that here in France it's a bit less, but you can play with uh, the thickness um, of the last two layers um, and then adding more insulation as well as the type of material that you use. Um, and that's being determined during the design and engineering. So during that phase, it's, yeah, you need to focus on a lot of different factors in order to take them all into account in order to come to such a, uh, such a building. Within every project, also within this project, it's like doing some new things, solving those, being creative. And then these you learn, these are the new takeaways for your next buildings, your next projects which, uh, where you build upon. Um, so also here we've got created a lot of principal details which we actually uh, save and share on our knowledge base which is a part of our library. And our partners um, also in Japan or in New Zealand to our faith from Corox and they can use all those details so that they don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, and of course they can also share. Uh, their details. So um, uh, within every project that's being built by us or, or by our partners, uh, a lot of new knowledge is be being gained, and it's important to share. So sharing is caring. So if you're interested, in, then of course you can contact us, emailing us, uh, calling us. Um, what we always do uh, at first is to make a business case. That's important um, uh, to analyze how they build locally, compare it with concrete printing, um, and then focus on building faster and cheaper. Um, and then I think that's a solid base in order to enter into a partnership. Whether it is we are building, uh, we build mainly in the Netherlands or just in the countries around it, that's best. Uh, if it would be further, then uh, we would be the technology provider and supporting and enabling uh, you to print in order to uh, your projects. And then the aim is to have one uh, printer eventually when that's full, having the second and the third printer. And at this moment we see that our clients, our partners, in countries like Morocco or for example in Japan they are ordering their second and their third printer which means that the first one is doing a good job.